Hello, welcome back. This is Mr. Wakefield again. We're now looking at the second video that we're going to have for section 3.4 right now. Uh, we're going to see some bigger word problems than we've seen before. Uh, so uh, the steps are still going to basically be the same. It, just to show you as an example, uh, back in the first section that we did word problems back in section 3.7, uh, what did we do? And it, well, I'll tie this into what we're going to do today. Um, what we did was we set up an equation. Uh, we then solved the equation, and then we wrote the answer out with the units of measurement, okay, uh, that apply. In most problems will need the unit of measurement, as I mentioned. Uh, uh, we'll get into that more here coming up. But that's what we did, okay, those three steps. Equation, solve the equation, write out the answer. Uh, what we're going to do today is a little bit more detail on what we um, already did here, uh, which is the fact that we had to establish, remember we had to establish what the variable was in the equation as well. Remember I wrote down here, for example, uh, we took the question, I underlined it just to, to highlight it there, you don't have to underline it, but we took the question that they were asking us, how much baking soda, and that was what our variable was going to be. So whatever the question is, is that you, you attach a variable to that question, okay? So that when you put the variable into the equation and then solve for the variable, get the variable by itself, you have now answered the question. All right. We're going to still do that today. It's just the, the part where we do the where we set up the variable to have it a, to be attached to the question. That part, we're going to just do that a little bit more carefully and deliberately, okay, instead of just kind of putting an arrow here, okay? Uh, so that's what uh, if you look at these steps here that we have in section 3.4 now, these are the steps here where we do the where we set up the equation. I'll get into this more here in a minute. And then step four, we solve the equation. And then step five, we write out the answer. That's all the stuff that we did in previous sections when we had a word problem. Okay. What I'm talking about right now, though, these two steps right here are the steps where you figure out, you identify, in other words, what you're trying to find. In other words, what, what question are they asking you? And then you use a variable to represent that quantity from step one. So what they're saying, once again, is they're saying figure out what the question is, and then attach a variable to it. Step one, figure out the question. Step two, attach a variable to it. That's what they're saying there. We're just going to be a little bit more deliberate about it here, as you'll see, because these problems are bigger. All right. But other than that, it's really the same type of format uh, that we had in the previous word problems we did in uh, the previous two uh, uh, sections that we had before section 3.4. All right. Uh, one other thing is going to be different is that in a lot of these problems, we're going to need to come up with two equations. Let's see what it says here, two equations, all right, uh, instead of just one. How do we know the difference between a problem where we need just one equation, like we had in the previous sections when we did a word problem, versus uh, a lot of the problems moving forward where we're going to need two? Well, it tells you right here. It says that if we need to find one quantity, in other words, if they ask you just one question, for example, uh, in the previous sections that we did, they said, how much baking soda? That's one question. So we attach one variable to that one question, and then we, we solve for that variable. Okay, but uh, here in 3B, okay, it says that if you need to find two quantities, for example, in problem number one down here, it says find the two numbers. So that's two questions. They need you to find two different things. Okay, when they ask you to do that, uh, then you need to write down, uh, you, you're going to end up having two variables, all right, because you're going to have two questions up here in step one. You attach two different variables to that, all right. You can't use the same variable for two different questions, okay. There's no reason for us to believe that these two numbers are the same that we're finding. Okay, so they're two different numbers, and therefore you need two different variables, Okay, when there's going to be two different things you got to find. So, because we're finding two quantities in problem number one, we're going to need two equations with those two variables in it that we identified for that problem, and we will identify those coming up here. Okay, we'll attach a couple variables to the to the two questions there, but then those two variables need to be um, used in such a way that we need to then uh, find two equations with those two variables in it. 
and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so again, if there's one question, then you only need one equation, and then the one question will have a variable. You just make sure that that variable is in that one equation you found. You're ready to go. All right. If you uh, if they ask you two questions, all right, like in problem number one, then you're going to need uh, two equations that have both of those variables in it. Now, once you establish what your what your equations are, you've got them written down on your paper. At that point, you then solve the equation if you have only one equation. Or if you have two, then you solve the system of equations. What does that mean? Well, that's from back in section 5.2 and 5.3 that we did in a recent video. That's the ones where we did the substitution method and the elimination method. Okay, that's what you do to solve the system of equations if you have two equations. Okay, uh, now uh, it is your choice of which one of those two methods you want to do. Okay, uh, either substitution or elimination, I'll let you decide that. Usually I'm going to do substitution just because it's going to be easier in most of these problems, but that's just my preference. It's up to you. Okay, and then, of course, answer the question in English. Just like before, when we did word problems, that's the part where um, you uh, just simply have to say, uh, take that answer right there and then attach the unit of measurement to it unless the problem doesn't have any units of measurement in it. Okay, we talked about how units of measurement, for example, are teaspoons, scarves, square feet, pounds, these kinds of things. All right, if you have those kinds of things in your problem, then your answer should also have some sort of unit of measurement. And I'll review with you again about how to figure out what that, what that word is, okay, that you're going to use for the unit of measurement. Okay. Uh, speaking of unit of measurement, while we're on that topic, if, if you notice here in problem number one, there is no unit of measurement here. Okay, they don't talk about pounds or square feet or scarves or, or any of that kind of stuff, all right, inches or miles. And they don't talk about anything uh, regarding measurement. It's just numbers here. And so, um, in other words, it doesn't say 12 feet. It just says 12, okay. Uh, and so because of that, uh, your answer doesn't need to have the units of measurement. In it. Your answers are just going to be numbers this time. So instead of having two teaspoons... You're just going to have numbers like two or five or something like that. Okay, and so you don't need unit of measurements in your answer if your problem doesn't have any units of measurement. Okay, now uh, let's go ahead and start this problem off. The sum of two numbers is 12. Twice the larger plus the smaller equals 21. Find the two numbers. Again, what is the question or questions? All right. Uh, the questions, there's two of them, right? I'm going to put steps one and two together here, and you'll see why here in a second. But um, the question is find the two numbers. They, so they, the question is what are those two numbers? All right, the, that's the question you have to answer. So I'm going to say, um, and you want to be as specific about this as you can so that you can tell the two questions apart from each other you don't get them confused. You don't want to just say, number and number okay you don't want to just write down i'm finding a number and i'm finding another number now let's be specific notice that they talk about how one number is larger than the other okay so because of that when i write out my what i'm trying to find here and notice i'm actually writing this out whereas we didn't do this in previous word problems i just kind of pointed a variable towards what we were trying to find i'm being a little bit more deliberate this time because uh, it makes it easier for us to follow uh, the problem here and uh, make sure the variables are in the right place because I now need to attach a variable to each one of these two things. So don't just say number and number, say larger number and smaller number because the problem does clearly say that one is larger than the other. And so we know that one of the numbers we find is going to be larger, one's going to be smaller. And so that's going to, uh, we, again, you want your description here in the first two steps to be as specific as you can so that it's easier then to not end up putting the variables in the wrong place. All right, so if I call this X and I call this one Y, you can call it any letters you want. That's your choice. I just decided to use X and Y, all right, just to give it a name, okay? But you can call it A and B if you want to. That's fine. Anything you want there. Um, but now that I have a variable attached to those two things, because I was specific here about 
uh, one of them's larger and one of them smaller, I now can be certain that I'm putting the X and the Y in the correct place because there's a reference in the problem to, uh, the, here there's a reference to the larger number so you know that the X would go here and then here they're referring to the smaller number so you know that the Y would go here. That's why I'm being specific here so that you can be certain that the X and Y are going in the right place. Um, step three. Step three is where you got to come up with the equations. And since we have two variables, you guys, remember when you have two variables, you need two equations. Okay. Um, you can't solve the word problem with one equation if you have two variables. It's not going to happen. Okay. Got to have two. Uh, so, um, Let's go through the problem here. Let's use what we learned back in the previous video, the first half of section 3.4, where we learned how to uh, take sentences and convert them to equations. That's, that strategy is not going to always work moving forward, but it will work on this problem, and I'll show you why this problem is like that. Okay, notice in the first problem here, it has that word is again, followed by a number. Again, like I said in the last video, when you have the word is followed by a number, that usually means that you can come up with an equation. Not always, as we'll see here. Okay, it depends on what is on each side of the word is. Okay, if you can convert each side of the word is to a normal mathematical expression or mathematical form, as we call it, then it'll look like a normal equation. You'll be able to do it. All right, can I do that here with this first sentence? Can I make an equation out of that with the equal sign being right here? Okay, well, let's take a look at it. It says the sum of two numbers. And what two numbers are they talking about? Aren't they talking about these two numbers that we're eventually supposed to find here? And what does sum mean? Okay, uh, it means addition. It's written a little bit differently than the way we wrote sum in the previous video because it doesn't have the word and here. All right, but that's okay. We know that sum means addition. So if they say sum of two numbers, they're talking about adding these two things together. So the sum of two numbers is referring to X and Y being added together. Okay, so let me just highlight this here for you. So this part right here, okay, becomes this part right here. All right, I'm just making sure you know where I got the x plus y from, okay? So the sum of two numbers, that's x plus y. Bring down your equal sign for the word is. All right, and then you know that 12 is just 12. There's nothing to convert there. So we've got our first equation, all right? And it has both variables in it. When you come up with your two equations in a problem that has two variables, when you come up with the two equations, it's got to have both of the variables in each equation. Well, we got one. We just need one more. Let's go to the next sentence now. Can we come up with an equation there? It looks like I can because here's the word equals. Obviously, that's a reference to an equal sign, right? So can I convert each side of that word to a mathematical form so that it'll look like a normal equation? Because that's what equations look like. Equations have an equal sign in the middle, right? And then each side of it is something that's mathematical. You could put it into mathematical form. Let's see if we can do that here. Twice the larger, doesn't that mean two times the larger, which is two times x? Okay, so twice the larger, that's two times x, isn't it? Plus, okay, that's pretty self-explanatory there, plus the smaller, okay. You don't ever want to put words in your equations, so we need to try to convert them to... Uh, something mathematical, all right? Um, we know that twice the larger means two times the larger, but we know that larger is x, and x is allowed to go in your equation. So we're able to convert this whole thing into mathematical form here. All right, same thing with the word plus. You can convert it to a plus sign. That's mathematical form. All right, mathematical form, remember, is when you have constant numbers, variables, and operations like plus or minus or multiplication, something like that. Um, the smaller, that can be converted to math because we know that the smaller number is y. That's a variable. Variables count for mathematical form. So this whole phrase right here before the equals word here, that whole thing I converted to 2x plus y. That's mathematical form. All right, we're doing it here, right? We're, we're successful in converting this thing to an equation because now the equal sign can be brought down and then the 21, there's nothing to convert there, it's just 21. And now you can see we have two equations. 
with both of our variables in each one. And so we did it. Okay, that's exactly what we have to do when we have two variables in our word problem. Two equations with both of our variables in each one. All right. And, um, and so we have now a system of equations. System of two equations like we said we have to have when we have two variables in the problem. So the next step is to solve. Since we have two equations, though, we treat it like a system of equations. Again, that's when you either do the substitution method from 5.2 or you do the elimination method from 5.3. Your choice. I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, substitution method here, although elimination is not too bad here as well. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do... Um, uh, I'm going to get the y by itself right here by subtracting the x over to the other side. Again, I'm subtracting the x over to the other side. I'm subtracting x from both sides here. Uh, so y will be by itself, and you get 12 minus x. All right. So um, the x's cancel on this side if you subtract x here, and then 12 minus x, you can't combine those because they're not like terms, so it's just 12 minus x. Then what do I do after I get one of the variables by itself in the substitution method from 5.2? I then plug it into the other equation. So let's do that. Okay. And if I do that, I get 2x plus 12 minus x. Again, use a parenthesis when you plug something into a variable. And we don't see this that often, but when you have a plus in front of a bracket and there's nothing in between the plus and the bracket in a linear equation, which is what this is, it's like distributing positive 1, okay? Uh, and Whereas if this had been a minus, you'd be distributing a negative 1. But it, since it's a positive, you're going to be distributing positive 1. But when you multiply by positive 1, it does not what? It does not change it at all. It's still going to be um, 12 minus x. Okay, uh, and remember, you got to have pluses and minuses in front of each uh, answer you get when you distribute there. So the plus and minus that we have here is still going to be there because the plus, when you multiply by one, again, it doesn't change it. All right, then we need to solve that resulting equation. I uh, combine like terms. I then need to move the 12 over with the 21. Okay. And I end up getting what? I end up getting x equal to 9. And But in the substitution method, what do we got to do? After we figure out what one of the variables is equal to, we have to go back to the uh, equation that we got at the end of the first step of substitution, which is that one where we get one of the four variables by itself, that step. And that's what I did right there. I got uh, the y by itself from the first equation. I use that equation, I plug in the answer I got from the first variable into that equation, and it'll tell me what the other variable is equal to. Again, this is all from 5.2 when you did the substitution method. And so I end up with y equal to 3. Okay, so now I have solved for both variables. I'm pretty much done, I just need to write out my answer. Okay, notice that there are, uh, like I said a minute ago, there's no units of measurement here. There's no feet or miles or pounds or square feet or any of that stuff. Our answers are just 9 and 3. And so because of that, you can just say that your answers are 9 and 3. You don't have to say 9 feet and 3 feet. In fact, you shouldn't because there is no feet in this problem. Okay, just say the numbers if there's no units of measurement in your problem. Most problems from this, from this point forward will have units of measurement. In fact, I think just about all of them will, if I remember right. But um, just this problem doesn't. Okay. Uh, so don't feel like you've got to put words in the answer there. Uh, you don't even need to put the word and here. I just did that. But you could say nine. Uh, you could cir circle nine and three separately even if you wanted to. Uh, but make sure you tell me that nine... And three are the answers, uh, however you do it. You just don't need any words there. No units of measurement, in other words. Okay, so let's move on to the next problem here. Uh, the total number of Democrats and Republicans in the U.S. House of Representatives during a given session was 434. Notice, you guys, that the word was is like the past tense of the word is. All right. Um, sounding, I know I'm sounding like an English teacher again, but... I, I got to do that sometimes when we're doing word problems. 
Uh, so was is just like is. It's just that it's it's uh, in the past. It was uh, in, a, in a past session of the U.S. House of Representatives, not the current session. Um, and so keep that in mind. It looks like we'll be able to make an equation out of that. Uh, then it says here there were 12 more Republicans than Democrats. Were also is a, a past tense of the word is. All right, it's it's, it's something that's equal in the past. Uh, it's like saying there is, but it was in the past, 12 more Republicans and Democrats. But we're not going to be able to make an equation out of this uh, just by converting this to an equal sign. It's not going to work because on this side of the word were, we just have this word right here. And you can't make an equation. You can't turn this into mathematical form. It's just the word there. All right. So we're going to have to come go about it a different way there. We'll talk about that carefully. Don't worry. All right. Um, and then the final sentence is where the question is. Usually the final sentence will give you the question. Uh, it says, how many members of each party were there? So what do we always do in a word problem? We establish what we're trying to find and we attach a variable to it. Okay, we do that first before we try to set up the equations so that when we put the variables into the equations, we'll know that we'll know what the variables mean. Okay, you don't want to be just throwing variables into your equations, all right, without knowing what they mean first, right? Okay, that doesn't make sense, right? So we need to know what they mean, and they are supposed to mean the, they're supposed to be the question, all right? That's what they're supposed to be. And so we establish what our question is. It says, how many members of each party were there? What are the two parties here, you guys? They are the Democrats and Republicans. So what I want to say here is I want to say, the number of Democrats and the number of Republicans. Don't just say Democrats, Republicans, all right? That makes it sound like it's not even a, a number, all right? Remember, variables are always numbers. They're always The question is always going to be uh, a number, all right? They're never going to ask you a question in a word problem that doesn't end up being equal to a number. I mean, this is a math class. It's not a surprise, right? So uh, this is the number of Democrats. It's not just saying Democrats, all right? Uh, I know that's kind of the same thing, but I just want to make sure that you are, again, like I said before, be as specific as you can so that there's no confusion as you move on into step three here eventually, okay? Um, so I'm being a little bit uh, detailed there, maybe a little bit picky about how to write it. You don't have to write it exactly like I do. I'm just trying to encourage you to be as specific as you can for your own sake so that you don't get uh, uh, confused as you move into the next step. So that there's complete clarity. I'll call this uh, X and Y. Again, Again, you could call it any letter you want. In fact, you could call this D and R for Democrats and Republicans if you want. Whatever's easier for you. All right. You can call it any letter you want. I just like to use X and Y. But again, since we have um, two different variables, we need two equations, don't we? And not only do we need two equations, but we need to have these two variables in those two equations, right? Okay. Now, what are those two equations going to be? Let's go, just like in the last problem, let's go through each sentence and see if we can come up with an equation from those sentences. The first one here, this is a word you're going to see a lot, the total the word total is also a reference to addition, just like sum is, okay? Uh, if I said that I made $10 today and I made $8 yesterday, the total that I made would be 10 plus 8, right? I would add up the two days, wouldn't it? So the word total is a reference to addition, isn't it? So if they say the total number of Democrats and Republicans in the U.S. House during a given session, isn't that just adding up these two things right here, the number of Democrats and number of Republicans? But we can't put words inside of our equations. That's one of the reasons why we have these variables here. All right? Now, don't use variables for things that are not equal to the question. They should only be for the question. You don't want to have too many variables. You won't be able to get the answer that way. But... Because we have variables for these things, we can then make an equation uh, out of the first part of that sentence. All right, And then after they say all that stuff, the total number of Democrats and Republicans during a given session was, now was is an equal sign, right? Because like I said, that's like the word is just 
in the past in a previous session. So I bring down the equal sign right here to represent the word was and then 434. You can just write that down. There's nothing to convert there. It's just a number. Now this next sentence, we need one more equation, right? This next sentence, like I said, you can't put an equal sign right here, even though that's what it means, because it's not going to lead to an equation, unfortunately, due to the fact that I can't convert the word there into an equation into a, something mathematical. It's just the word there. Um, but there's a different way to do this, and let me show you. Look up here. Uh, it says tips for uh, looking for an equation in an application problem. Application problem is just another f uh, way of saying word problem. Uh, look for something that's equal to something else. That's what we've been doing when we look for the word is and, and the word equals and the word was and all that kind of stuff. But there's also this additional set of tips here. Look at the first one in 2A right here. It says if one quantity is more than or less than another, okay, uh, then we can use this formula here uh, where it says the smaller quantity plus the difference between the two quantities, I'll explain that in a minute, is equal to the larger quantity. Yes, you can do this even when it says less than, okay, even though less than means subtraction. Uh, it just uh, it just means that you're setting it up a little bit differently here. It's kind of like when you uh, have a subtraction and you move it over to the other side of the equation, it becomes addition. That's kind of what's going on here. Okay, so it would even work when it's less than. I'm not saying that you should <laughs> use a plus uh, in less than all the time. We already know that there's situations where you don't do that. Uh, but when there, when you don't have a situation where um, you have something is something else, and we can't do that here because of this word, but if you don't have a situation where you have something is something else, uh, like we did uh, in the previous uh, video, then uh, this is another option that you can do for the word less than, or the phrase less than, okay? Um, but yeah, usually less than would be subtraction. Uh, but if you're not going to do uh, like we did in the last video where you have something, uh, where you have a sentence with the equal sign in the middle and then you're just translating each side of the equal sign, in that case you normally would do uh, less than being subtraction. All right, so don't get me wrong there. Normally it would be. But um, if you're not going to do that kind of setup, you have this as an alternative. So if something is more than or less than another, and you can do this. Let me show you what I mean there. Okay. Um, see how it says uh, there were 12 more Republicans than Democrats? There's the two key words there. There's 12 more Republicans than Democrats, more than. They're saying that something is strictly more than something else. All right, they're not saying that it's 12 more than twice as much. You can't do it in that case. It's just strictly... 12 more than. When that happens, you can use this formula. But before I show you this formula here, I want to show you a simpler example to help you understand this better. Okay, so you don't have to write this down. I'm just going to put it on a piece of scratch paper. Okay, let's say that I have $7 and you have $10. So you have three more dollars than me, right? You see what I just said right there? You have three more than me. You, see, you have three more than me. Okay, it's not three more than twice as much. No, it's just you have strictly have three more than me. All right. Isn't it true that we need to add to my smaller amount to get it equal to the bigger amount? Remember, we're trying to make an equation here, so you got to make something equal to something else. You have to add to the smaller amount in order to get it equal to the bigger amount. That's why it says here, smaller plus the difference, which in this case is 3, because there's a difference of $3 between me and you. It's equal to the larger amount. So you got to look at the two things that you're comparing. If something is 3 more than something else, look at the two things you're comparing, which is my dollar amount and your dollar amount, and you add to the smaller amount, and then you say it's equal to the bigger amount, and that's your equation. Let's try that now. 12 more Republicans and Democrats. Okay, what are we comparing, you guys? We are comparing the Democrats and Republicans, all right? One is 12 more than the other, so that's what you're comparing. Which one is bigger? 
the Republicans are bigger, right? Because it says there's 12 more of the Republicans. So that means that the Democrats is the smaller one. And so just like right here, you take the smaller and you add to that the difference, which is 12. And then you put the bigger one over here on the other side of the equal sign all by itself. The bigger one is, I'm sorry, I've got that backwards. My, my apologies. The Democrats is the X. The smaller is the Democrats, and the Democrats is the X. So i got to put the X here. You always add to the smaller in this case. All right? And then the bigger is all by itself on the other side of the equal sign. All right? So, again, smaller plus the difference is equal to the bigger. All right? And so that's why um, we end up with this right here. All right, and it's really important, you guys, to remember that that uh, that it has to be smaller being added to. Okay, it's so easy. I see a lot of students that they'll look at the bigger one and they'll say, "Oh, the, why is the bigger one?" So we should add twelve to that, right? Since it's bigger. No, it doesn't make sense. All right, because you have to add just like we did with the seven and the ten. You got to add to the smaller to make it equal to the bigger, right? In order for it to be equal, you've got to add to the smaller. If I said 10 plus 3 equal to 7, that wouldn't be true, would it? Okay, you don't add to the bigger, you add to the smaller. And so that's why it comes out this way. And so now I have two equations with my two variables in it. Step 4 is to solve that system. And so let's go ahead and solve that system here. Uh, notice that uh, we already have one of the four variables in the system here by itself. And so it would definitely be easier to do the substitution method here. If one of the four variables is already by itself, the first step of substitution is already done, where you have to get the variable by itself. It's already done. So you take uh, that equation and you plug it into the other equation. And remember, you always plug it into the other one. And we get what here if I do that? I get, uh, plugging in x plus 12 into the y up here, I get x plus x plus 12 equal to 434, and then I solve that equation. Remember, I'm distributing positive 1 here again, just like I did up here. Um, and so when you distribute positive 1, it just stays the same here, because when you multiply by 1, nothing changes. Then I combine like terms. You should always get um, linear equations here for your equations in, that you're solving in these word problems. Okay, at least here in Math 51. Um, unless you're in one of those previous sections. I'm, I'm talking about from this section moving forward, you should always get linear equations. Uh, we had some equations where we had to you know, cross multiply before they became linear equations in a previous section that we did, uh, section 3.7. But other than that, um, it's going to be linear equations moving forward. And uh, sometimes you'll have fractions that you need to get rid of before it becomes a linear equation, but it will eventually be, be in a linear equation in all the word problems that we see in this class. Okay, Future math classes, you'll have some bigger equations to deal with for word problems, but not here. As I finish solving this uh, equation, I end up with x equal to 211. I then have to plug it back in, just like we always do in substitution. I plug it back into the equation at the, uh, that we used uh, for step one that we plugged into the other equation, that equation. Um, just like we did in the last problem, just like we did back in the substitution section, section 5.2. All right, plug that into here. Okay. And we get 223. And so what's my final answer here? Let me give myself some room here. Um, there's going to be what? 211 is what here? Sorry, that came off the screen. There. 211 is the X, and X is the Democrat. So I need to write out what? 211 Democrats. Remember, you can't just say 211 because um, Democrats, even though that's people, that is a unit of measurement. I know we don't think of people as a unit of measurement normally, but it is a unit of measurement because if you say 211, that could be 211 anything. It could be 211 yards, 211 inches, 211 feet. All right. 
But when you say 211 Democrats, now you know exactly what the 211 means. Is 211 Democrats. So Democrats is a unit of measurement. So is Republicans, okay? Uh, because it tells you exactly what the number means. So since they talk about Democrats and Republicans and the problem, all right, you need to have, uh, and since that is a unit of measurement, Democrats and Republicans, you need to have a unit of measurement in your answer. And I know that X and Y is the number of Democrats and Republicans. And so that's why I'm saying that the 211 is Democrats and the 223 is Republicans here. Okay. Uh, let me write that a little bit better there. But that is, as I'm cleaning that up here, that is uh, the last thing you need to do in a word problem, isn't it? Okay. You need to say what the uh, what the unit of measurement is unless, like in problem number one, unless uh, there's no uh, unit of measurement in the problem at all. What I'd like you to do right now is uh, try this problem on your own, number three. All right, hit the play button after that. But let me clear up some things before you get started. Uh, it mentions uh, numbers in millions right here. You can't always do what I'm about ready to say, but you can in this problem. Uh, because the numbers are in millions in this problem, all the way through the problem, uh, you can convert the to, just to make it easier to write. Instead of saying 20 million in your problem, you could just say 20. Instead of saying 102 million, you could just say 102. Just remember that when you get your answer, like for example, let's say your answer is 15 for one of the variables. That would actually be 15 million. If your answer was 32, it would actually be 32 million. So just keep that in mind. Okay, but notice here, uh, before I ask you guys to try this, let me just kind of give you some hints to get started here. Um... Notice it says more than again. There's those two key words, more than. All right, so they're saying that there's more watching TV on Thursday than on Saturday. So if you compare Thursday and Saturday, all right, one is more than another. And so you could do that same thing we did with Democrats and Republicans where the smaller of the two things you're comparing gets added to the difference, which is what? 20 million which you can just write down the number 20 for that. So the 20 would go right here, all right? And then you put the two things, the smaller one and the bigger one, here and here. And then there's that word total in the next sentence. What does total mean again, you guys? It means just like it did up here, it means when you're adding two things together. So keep that in mind as well. All right, so please try that problem. Hit the play button after that, and then we'll continue. Okay. In number three, the two things that they ask us to find are how many viewers on each of the two nights. So being specific here, we want to know the viewers on Thursday night and the viewers on Saturday night. Because the two nights that they're talking about here when they say each of the two nights is Thursday and Saturday. So again, be specific. Don't just say uh, viewers and viewers. Okay, Don't just say those two words, viewers and viewers. Okay, be specific, and this one is Thursday, this one's Saturday. Now, if you had made the Y the Thursday and the X the Saturday, or if you had used different letters, please keep that in mind. Your equations are going to look different than mine, but your answers should still come out the same. So if it looks different at first, don't panic, okay? It doesn't mean you did something wrong, all right? Because, again, it's your choice on what letters you use, all right? Um, but... Remember I said in the more than example, notice there's not the word is in this sentence, by the way. That's why I'm, uh, since I don't see an equal sign in here like the word is or the word equals or some of those other phrases we saw in the last video for, for what could be translated into an equal sign, like uh, the result is or... Uh, Here's the uh, previous video here. The result is, the result is the same as. We don't see any of that stuff here in this sentence, but as an alternative, we see that phrase more than. And so that's telling us, oh yeah, I can do that thing where I do the smaller plus the difference is equal to the bigger. Okay, smaller plus difference equal to the bigger when you have the phrase more than. All right, so... Um, I ended up getting this equation right here. How did I get that? 
is because the smaller amount is the Saturday viewers, and that's why. So I put that here, and I'm going to add to the smaller amount, which is 20, short for 20 million. And then the bigger amount of the two things that you're comparing here is the X, because that's the viewers on Saturday. So the X and the Y are the things that are being compared, all right, when they say that one is 20 million more than another. And so you put the smaller of the two comparisons right here and the bigger of the two here. And that's that equation. Then it says the total is, and there's that word, so we can make an equal sign there. The total is 102 million, which we can shorten to just the number 102. Okay, how do we say the total? That means we add up the two things that they're totaling there, which is the viewers on the two nights. That would be X and Y, wouldn't it? The viewers on set Thursday and Saturday. So we get X plus Y equal to 102. Okay. All right. So we then do what? We then do the substitution method here since one of the variables is already by itself. Substitution seems easier. Uh, so I plug this into the other equation here. Uh, and it looks like this. I then solve this equation. Remember, there's an invisible one, positive one in front of that bracket. And so distributing that out, again, that doesn't change anything. So we then solve the resulting equation here. We end up getting y equal to 41. I then plug in the 41 into the equation where the uh, uh, there was at the end of step one, but you know the one that we plug into the other equation, that one. Uh, we plug it into there. Uh, and we get x equal to 61. Now remember when you write out your answer, okay, you can't just say 41 million viewers and 61 million viewers. You can't do that because that doesn't tell me which night is the 41 mil and which one is the 61 million. All right, so if you're trying to find two things in a word problem, you guys, and we're going to see that a lot moving forward, so please listen up here. If, you, if you're trying to find two things in a word problem, T make sure to make it clear which one is which. Okay. Uh, don't just say 61 million viewers, 41 million viewers. Tell me which one is Thursday, which one's Saturday. Okay. Um, tell me which one is which, in other words. Uh, so viewers, uh, viewers is the unit of measurement, all right? You don't just say 41 million and 61 million. Viewers is the unit of measurement. But if you're trying to find two different things and one of them Saturday, one of them Thursday, you got to tell me which one is Saturday and which one is Thursday. And so that's why I did that here. The reason why the 41 million viewers was on Saturday was because the 41 was the Y and the Y is the Saturday. And then the 61 million viewers on Thursday, the reason why I know it's on Thursday is because... The X is the Thursday, and the X is the 61. So 61 million viewers on Thursday. Remember, that it had to be in millions, as we talked about. Okay, but yeah, normally it would just be 41 and 61. But because of how they wrote the problem, uh, and you won't see too many problems like this where they put it in millions, but in this problem we were able to do that, and we needed to do that, okay, uh, where we had to write it in millions there. Okay, so that is number three. Um, moving on into number four, let me get the clean sheet of paper here again. Not that one. Hold on. Here we go. And um, this is a baseball question, by the way. You don't need to be a baseball expert here. I'll help you out with the details here. Um, this could go for pretty much any sport. Just remember that in baseball, there's no ties, okay? Every single game is either a win or a loss, so that's going to help you understand the problem here a little bit better. All right, but let's go ahead and read it. It says, in the year 2001, the Athletics won 18 less than twice as many games as they lost. They played 162 games. How many wins and losses did they have? Again, what's our, what's our process here? Okay, so for steps one and two, we need to say what we're trying to find. It's a, it asks us the question, how many wins and how many losses? So um, I'll say that X is the number of wins. And Y is the number of losses. Okay. 
So now we know what our variables are, so that makes it easier to make sure that we're putting the variables in the right place in our equations. We need two equations again because we have two variables. All right. Now this first sentence is a this one we need to talk about. This one's a little bit different, but I'll help you understand it. Before we get, let me show you a simpler example of this. See how they say the athletics won? I can make an equation out of that even though the word is, or some variation of the word is, is not located in the problem. Let me show you what I mean. Let me give you a similar example. The Dodgers, speaking of baseball, won four games in the World Series. I'll just write down they won four games. They won four games in the World Series, and we can just shorten that to one four games. My point is, is that when you say that somebody won something, you can convert that to an equation, and this is how you do it. The number of wins is four. Isn't that true? Isn't this a perfectly legitimate way of translating this sentence up here? The Dodgers won four games. Isn't that the same thing as saying that the number of wins is four? It is, right? It means the same thing. But the difference is that now I have an equal sign there. So I took this sentence that did not have an equal sign in it and I converted it to one that does. But it still has the same meaning and that's what's important. You can't change the meaning. But as long as it has the same meaning, you're fine. It's the same thing up here. When the Athletics won 18 less than twice as many games as they lost, that's like saying that the number of wins is... 18 less than twice as many games as they lost. So if they say that a team won something, it's the same thing as saying that the number of wins is that same something. You're just converting it to this. So it's just a matter of understanding that this can be converted to that. Same thing down here. Okay. So now we can make this into an equation because of the word is right here. The number of wins. Isn't that X? And then the word is, as you know, is an equal sign because there's a number immediately after it, so I can make it into an equal sign. 18 less than twice as many games as they lost. Now, since uh, we're doing a straight-up translation here with the word is and an equal sign, okay, less than will mean subtraction here like it normally does. All right? But remember what we talked about in the last video. Less than means you reverse you reverse the two things being subtracted. So the 18 will go after the minus sign, and the twice as many games as they lost, that part of it will go before. So twice as many games as they lost, how do I convert that to a mathematical form? Um, twice as many means two times, meaning two multiplied by. Two multiplied by what? Games as they lost. That's the number of losses, right? So wouldn't this be, isn't this phrase right here equal to 2 times y? Okay, so we have 18 less than 2y. Since uh, less than means you reverse around the two things being subtracted, you then say 2y minus 18. Okay, so we did it. We converted that sentence to an equation. Let's look at the next sentence. They played 162 games. Remember I said that there's no ties, you guys. All right. If the Dodgers play 10 games, I'll just use them as an example, and let's say that they won seven of them, all right, uh, how many losses do they have then? If they played 10 and they won seven, doesn't that mean that they um, have three games that they lost? Okay. In other words, the number of wins and the number of losses has to add up to what? It has to add up to the total number of games played. And so it's the same thing here. They played 162. That means that the number of wins and the number of losses have to add up to 162. So that actually is an equation there. I know you don't see the word is, but you don't always, like, like we've already found out here in some of these problems, you don't always have to see the word is or some variation of that in order to get an equation. We've got other strategies. This is an example of that. Okay, we know that 
that wins and losses equal the number of games played because there's no ties in baseball. Okay. Step four. Let's solve this system. Since X is already by itself, we plug in to Y minus 18. Sorry, I plugged that in the wrong place. Excuse me. Since X is equal to 2Y plus 8, 2Y minus 18, we plug in 2Y minus 18 into the um, other equation. Always plug it into the other equation. I'm doing that here. And I get this equation right here. We solve this. Distributing out that invisible positive one in front of that doesn't change the uh, terms at all, but you're getting rid of the brackets like we always have to do first when we solve a linear equation. We then combine like terms. We then move over the 18 with the 162 like we always do there. And that gives me 3y equal to 180. That last step that we always do is to divide out. And that gives me y equal to 60. y equal to 60. And then once we solve one of the variables, we go back and plug it in to figure out the other one, right? Like we've done so many times with the substitution method. Okay. And so I get x equal to 2 times 60 minus 18. What is that equal to? 120 minus 18. Put that in your calculator, you get 102. So we've now figured out what the two variables are equal to. What's the last thing we got to do in a word problem after we figure out what the variables are equal to? Okay, say what they mean as far as the units of measurement. All right, uh, wins and losses, that's a unit of measurement because 60 could mean anything without a unit of measurement. It could be 60 feet, 60 yards, whatever. But if you say 60 wins, now that's now you know exactly what we're talking about. By the way, that's it's not 60, uh, it's actually 60 losses because Y is the losses here. But 60 wins or 60 losses, that's a, now you know exactly what 60 means. Uh, so you've got to put that unit of measurement in the answer. So we have 60 losses. And since the 102 is the wins, that means that we have 102 wins. Okay. And so we did it. We figured out what the two things were equal to. Let's keep moving here on to the next sheet here. Uh, the second sheet of this uh, video here. Of the, of the, it's actually the last sheet of section uh, 3.4. Uh, one more sheet to go here. Number, uh, excuse me, number five. There it is right there. Um. The largest sheep ranch in the world is located in Australia. Now, as I mentioned in the last video, if you have the word is, but it's followed by an action, okay, something is located somewhere, locating something um, that's like an action, all right, that's not, uh, there's not a number after that. You can't convert this to uh, an equal sign then, okay. Uh, just like we said before, where... Um, where you had, uh, if four is added, if three is added, that's an action. So the word is does not mean equal in that case. Uh, at least not in the mathematical sense. Uh, so is located, that's not uh, going to be an equal sign. There. But that's okay. All right, let's keep reading here. There's plenty more sentences here. It says the number of sheep on the ranch is eight-thirds. Okay, now that looks like it's going to be an equal sign because there's a number right after it, eight-thirds. Eight, there's a number of uninvited kangaroos grazing on the pasture land. Together, hers are these two animals. What's that word right there, you guys? Doesn't that mean addition? Okay. So herds of these two animals. So the two animals together, the herds of the two animals together, are going to add up to 88,000, right? How many sheep and how many kangaroos are roaming the ranch? Okay. So now... I'm trying to find two things here. It says what? The number of what? The number of sheep, right? And what was the other thing they asked for? 
the number of kangaroos. All right. That's what they ask, right? So we've got our two uh, variables that identify or that are attached to the two things that we're trying to find. That means we need two equations with those two variables in it, right? We know that that first sentence is not going to give us an equation, not just because the is doesn't work, but because there's no math in that first equation, right? You don't always need the word is to come up with an equation. We've learned that already. But there's no math here in this first equation. You're not going to get any mathematical form if you have no math. There's no numbers there. Okay, they mentioned largest, but that there's, no, there's still no math there, though. So let's keep going. The number of sheep on the ranch is, so we, we know that this is an equal sign because it's followed by a number. So we got the equal sign there. If we look at before the word is, it says the number of sheep on the ranch. Isn't that uh, x right here? So we got x, and then is means equal. And then eight-thirds the number of uninvited kangaroos. I want to talk about that for a minute. Eight-thirds the number. What does that mean? Is that eight-thirds plus the number of kangaroos? Is that eight-thirds times the number of uninvited kangaroos? What are they talking about there? All right, well, we need to uh, go over that carefully here. Um, Again, I'm just going to write down a separate example that's easier to understand on a piece of scratch paper. You don't have to write down the scratch paper here. But if I have 10 bucks and you have 20 bucks, again, I like to use money because we can all relate to money, right? If I have 10 bucks and you have 20 bucks, doesn't that mean that uh, I have half of what you have? Okay. Uh, I have half what you have. Okay. Just like it says here, eight thirds the number. It doesn't say eight thirds times the number. It just says, a fraction, and then the word number right after that. It's the same thing here. My amount of money is half the number of dollars you have. Half the number of dollars you have. Okay? And that's true, right? My amount is half the number of dollars you have, which is 20. We know that 10 is half of 20. Isn't it also true that 10 is equal to one half times 20? Because if you do one half times 20, you get 10. What I'm trying to prove to you here is that one half uh, needs to be multiplied, not added. You need to multiply. Okay, so this is just an example to help you picture that. The point is, is that the lesson I'm trying to teach you here is that when you have a fraction followed by the words, the number, that means that uh, the fraction needs to be multiplied by that number, not added. And so that's what I'm getting at here. And so if you see that in like your homework or a test, if you have a fraction and then it just says the words, the number right after that, they're trying to tell you uh, that it's the fraction times uh, whatever that number is there. Okay, so it's eight-thirds times, times what here? Well, what is the number that they're referring to? It's the number of kangaroos. That's y. Okay, and so it's eight-thirds times y. But it is times, and that's my point. Okay, now, um, together, herds of these two animals total 88,000. Since they're saying herds of these two animals, they're talking about the number of sheep the, the entire herd of sheep and the entire herd of kangaroos. So that's X and Y together. So since they total 88,000, what are we going to say? We're going to say X plus Y is equal to 88,000. Okay, now, we now have our two equations, you guys. They have both of the variables in it like they're supposed to. Step four is to solve. All right, one of the variables is already by itself. So I take what it's equal to and I plug it into the other equation. All right. Now notice that this is just a single term. Normally when we plug in the bracket in the substitution method, normally the bracket will have two terms in it, not this time. Since, there's no, since this is just an invisible one in front of it, to get rid of the bracket, you, you don't distribute the one because there's only one term in here. 
you distribute when there's more than one term in the bracket. But when there's just one, you just say one times that. And we know that that's not going to change it. But then how do I solve this when you got that fraction there? Don't be intimidated by the fraction. I know that the fraction is going to be a pain, but uh, you don't have to do that LCD thing, okay, where you multiply both sides of the equation by the LCD. You could do that, but you don't have to. The reason why you don't have to do that here is because that's a requirement when you have um, an equation with variables in the denominator. This does not have a variable in the denominator. So... Um, and we do it at other times too, but I'm just saying that since it does not have a variable in the denominator here, we don't have to do that. Uh, and since I can combine these like terms here, they are like terms, they're both y to the first power here, uh, we can combine those by doing 8 thirds plus 1. Remember, there's an invisible 1 in front of that y right there. So you can add those two things together right there. All right. 1 is the same thing as 1 over 1, but in order to add those things together, because you always got to add your coefficients when you're combining like terms, right? We need a common denominator, and that would be 3 here. So let me just take care of that right here. Okay, I need to multiply by 3 there to make this to have the same denominator. This denominator is going to stay the same here. It's going to stay as 3. And so 8 thirds plus 3 thirds is what? it is equal to 11 thirds. And so that means that when I combine like terms, I get 11 thirds and then the y stays the same, as it always does when you combine like terms. The y part stays the same. Then as we learned back in, um, when we first learned linear equations for the first time, let me just uh, give you a visual of that here. Let me pull that out. When we learned um, when we learned how to solve uh, linear equations for the first time, when we had a fraction with no variable in it and it was being multiplied by y, and then we had no variable on the other side, we divided by that fraction so that the y would be by itself. It's the same thing here in this current problem. We divide both sides by eleven thirds. Okay. And how do you divide by a fraction again? We know that the 11 thirds are going to cancel over here and y will be by itself. But what do we get when we divide this? Remember, you got to make the 88,000 into a fraction. And then you need to multiply by the reciprocal of 11 thirds. Like this. Now, the 88,000 and 11, they reduce because you know that 88 and 11 reduce down to 8 over 1. So, likewise, 88,000 and 11 would reduce down to 8,000 over 1. Okay. In other words, if you divide 88,000 by 11, you get 8,000. And then when you divide 11 by 11, you get 1. That's what canceling is about. You're dividing by the same thing, right? So 8,000 times 3 is 24,000 over 1. I don't need to write that because it's over 1. And so the final answer there for the y part is 24,000. Then I plug it into the equation that uh, was the one that we plugged into the other equation. And I'm going to make it into 24,000 over 1 because we've got to multiply it by another fraction. Okay, that's the only reason I'm doing that. And then when I multiply these fractions here, since 24 and 3 reduce, it will also be true that 24,000 and 3 would reduce. Okay, 24 and 3 become 8 over 1. So in the same way, if I do 24,000 divided by 3, that would be 8,000. And 3 divided by 3 is 1. And so what happens when I um, multiply those together? 8 over 1 and 8,000 over 1. I'm going to get 64,000 over 1, which you can just write as 64,000. And so what do we get here? We end up with two answers here for each variable, like usual. Uh, and you just need to tell me which one is which here. Uh, use your units of measurement and all that. 
Uh, so since uh, 24,000 was the number of kangaroos, you just have to say, uh, I'm sorry, I said that backwards there. I'm sorry, no, I didn't say it backwards. What I did was I wrote down the wrong number. That's what I did wrong. There we go, 24,000 is why, why is kangaroos? So you could just say 24,000 kangaroos. You don't have to say uninvited kangaroos. You can just say kangaroos for short. What's important is that you're telling me which one's which. Okay, so you don't have to say the whole thing as long as I can tell that you understand which one is the 24,000 and which one's the 64,000. That's what's important. So 64,000 sheep, 24,000 kangaroos. All right. Short for uninvited kangaroos, that's fine. All right. So tell me which one is which here, and that's also the units of measurement there, all right? Kangaroos is telling you exactly what 24,000 is. Sheep is telling you exactly what 64,000 is. It's, it's, that's the unit of measurement also at the same time. So you've got all the information you need right here for your answer. All right. I'm going to try one more here before I ask you guys to try one again. Um, this one right here is, is quite similar to the next one here, so that'll help you with number seven. It says in a mixture of concrete, there are three pounds of cement for every one pound of gravel. If the mixture contains, and there's that word again, total of 140 pounds of these two ingredients. So again, they're totaling up two things. Okay, looks like a potential equation there. How many pounds of gravel are there? Now notice that they're asking this time for only one thing. They only want to know... Um, how many pounds of gravel there are. That's one question. Now they also refer to uh, cement here. And so what I like to do in this problem, this, this is not always necessary, but as you'll see here, it's going to be a lot easier to do the problem if I also come up with a variable for the cement as well, even though they didn't ask for it. Now I know I said earlier that you should only use variables for the things that they ask for, but if it makes it easier, and only if it does, you can also throw another variable in there for some other unknown thing in the problem. Okay, don't do it for something that you already know the answer to. Like if you knew that there was uh, 20 pounds of cement in the, that they're talking about in this problem, then you would use 20 for cement. But if you don't know it, um, and it makes it easier to come up with a variable for the cement, then do that. And you'll see here as I go through the problem that it will make it easier. But this, this is very rare, by the way. Don't worry. Uh, but uh, usually, almost always, when they ask you for uh, something or two things, uh, as you know, a lot of times they ask for two things, just use variables for the things that they're asking for. Okay? Uh, you don't need to put in any additional variables. I'm just doing it because it's going to make it easier. And I'll show you why here as we go along. So how many pounds of gravel are there? I'll call that X pounds of gravel. And I'm just going to throw in the, a di another variable for the pounds of cement because it's just going to make the problem flow better. Okay. And so since I have two equa since I have two variables, I need two equations. All right. Notice in the second sentence here, I'm skipping, a, it doesn't matter which sentence you do first. I'm going to do the second sentence because it's a little bit easier. Uh, just to get us off to a good start here. If the mixture contains a total of 140 pounds of these two ingredients, see how if I didn't know what the, if I didn't have a variable for the pounds of cement, I wouldn't be able to make an equation there very easily. All right. Um, it's easier when you have one there because it's, it wants us to total up both of these things. All right, so these two things total, what? Total of 140, so that means that X and Y together, in other words, the gr gravel and cement, they add up to 140. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted the variable for the cement. Now, let's go back to the first sentence. It says there are three pounds of cement for every one pound of gravel. Yes, you can make an equation out of that. And again, I'm going to do my scratch paper thing here again. You don't have to write it down. Uh, but just to help you understand better, let's say that um, uh, I was at a job where for every $1 I made, you made $2. For every 
For every one dollar I made, you made two dollars. Maybe you've been at the company longer, you have more seniority, you're making more money than me, right? Okay. Um, so let's say it this way: you made two for every one dollar I made. You made two dollars for every one dollar I made. All right, what does this mean as far as an equation? Can you make an equation out of that? So the amount that you made, when it says this right here, you made $2 for every $1 I made, that means that your amount is, and that, see how I'm incorporating an equal sign right there, your amount is two times as much as mine. Okay, your amount is two times as much as mine. Uh, so that means that, uh, and you can see that that's true because uh, your amount, which is $2, equals two times my amount, which is one. This is a true statement, isn't it? Okay, uh, so if this had said you made $3 for every $1 I made, okay, then it would be three equal to three times one. It would be your amount, this would still be true, it would be your amount is three times as much as mine. Okay, and I'm mentioning this because let's come back over here to the problem now. It says that there are three pounds of cement for every one pound of gravel. When they say that phrase, this amount for every, and then the second amount here with the for every, with that phrase in the middle like that, they are saying that this amount is three times as much as that because it's three for one. Okay, so if it's two for one, then it's two times as much. If it's three for one, it's three times as much. And so just like the how I wrote the equation here, you put the you put the amount that's before that phrase for every, and you uh, uh, that becomes the amount that's before the equal sign here. Okay, that's why the two went before the equal signs because it's before the words for every. It's the same thing here, right? The three pounds of cement, all right. Uh, because it's cement, we don't want to put the three there. All right, I know I put uh, two here. It's because it's because I didn't have the variables here. The point is, is that the cement, uh, there's three of that for every one pound of gravel. Uh, so um, the cement, which is the what? That's the y, right? The place where you want to put the three is right here. These two amounts, I only put those numbers there because we didn't have variables here. All right, uh, but the cement and the gravel, the two things you're comparing, they uh, that's what you put into this spot here and this spot here. All right, the, the two, or in this case, the three goes in the middle here. So the pounds of cement goes here, just like uh, right here. Let me just put it right underneath it here because that's before the phrase for every, and then the equal sign. And then since it's uh, three for one, this number is now going to be three instead of two. Okay, so again, two for one, you use two right here. Three for one, you use three right here. And then you put what? You put the, the thing that's after the word forever, which is gravel. Gravel is X. Sorry, that fell off the page there. Gravel is X. And so that's why we're going to put after the three, we're going to put X. So y equal to three times x, all right? So whatever's before goes here. Whatever's after the phrase for every goes over here. And then the three and the equal sign go in the middle. If it had been two for one, then the two would go in the middle. And that's how it works. So now I have my two equations with my two variables again. Since one of the variables is by itself, we take that, what it's equal to, and we plug it into the other equation, like always. All right. And we get what? We get, there we go, x plus 3x equal to 140. And then, remember, there's only one term inside that bracket, so don't distribute. Just say 1 times 3x, since there's a, invisible one in front of that bracket Just say one times three x is three x then you since you've gotten rid of the bracket you now combine like terms 
we're now on the step where you divide out. I get x equal to 35. Okay. I go back to that equation that I plugged in originally there, like we always do. Plug into that. And we get y equal to 105. Now, they did not ask me for y. They only asked me for gravel. But I can answer both questions here just for practice. If you only answer what they asked for, then that's fine. Okay, so if you just said uh, 35 pounds of gravel, all right, and since they only asked for one thing, if you actually forget to say the word gravel, that's fine too. If they do ask for two things, though, remember you got to tell me which one's gravel and which one's cement. So just for practice here, if they were asking for both things, this is what you'd say. You'd say 35 pounds of gravel and you'd say 105 pounds of cement. But if they were just asking for the gravel only, uh, then it is also okay to just say 35 pounds. Okay, so either way, you can do it either way there. Oh, but you can see how those equations flowed more. E it was easier to find those equations because we had that additional variable there. That, that's very rare, though. Like I said, usually you can just stick with uh, what, um, what they ask for, and that's your variables, nothing else. Number seven, I'd like you to try that right now. Okay. Um, it says, uh, you can see it's very similar here because it says an insecticide contains 95 centigrams of inert ingredient for every, there's that phrase again, okay, for every one centigram of active. So just like in the last problem, we had three for every one. Now we have 95 for every one. So just like we had uh, the two variables on, on each end right here, um, and then we had three in the middle. Now you're going to have the variables again on each end here because those are the, the two things are comparing, the inert ingredient and the active ingredient. Those are going to be your variables. You can use whatever letters you want. But those variables will be on each end. And then you'll have equal to 95 in the middle. Instead of equal to three, it'll say equal to 95 because it's 95 for every one. And then it says if a quantity of insecticide weighs 336, that's kind of like the um, that baseball problem where it said that it at, that it, they played 162 games. There's only two ingredients in this insecticide. And so if the whole thing weighs 336, guess what? That means that the two quantities have to what? They have to add up to 336 because those are the only two ingredients in there. There's nothing else. All right. Um, and so that's why uh, you can come up with an equation there. It's going to add up to 336. So go ahead and try number seven here, and then we'll actually wrap things up after that because we're going to skip uh, eight and nine right here. Okay, those ones are a little bit different than the other, so we're just going to stick with problems one through seven as far as these last two sheets are concerned. You can skip those two. And so, again, do number seven, hit the play button, and then we'll wrap things up for section 3.4. Okay, an insecticide contains 90, oh, I'm sorry, let me go ahead and, uh, I already read that. Um, let me jump down to the question here. I'm sure you've read it too. How much of each type of ingredient does it contain? So since they're talking about two ingredients here, inert ingredient and active, um, I wrote that down, and again, be specific here. They're measuring it in centigrams, so be specific about that just to make it easier for you. Again, the more specific you are about what your variables represent and what they equal, uh, the easier it'll be to make sure that you're putting the variables in the right place. So centigrams of inert and centigrams of active. All right. Um, and so let's jump into it here. Since we have two variables, again, we need two what? We need two... Uh, equations uh, and so um, jumping into this first sentence here we know that 95 for every one just like we did in the last problem where we did uh, uh, y equal to 3x I wrote it a little bit differently here on this uh, this answer key but it's y equal to 3x like we said earlier in that uh, in the same way this is going to be uh, again you put the y 
and the X, make sure you're putting them, this is very important, you have to put the thing that is before the words for every, you have to put that first, otherwise it'll be all messed up. And so if you're inert, whatever your inert variable is, my inert variable is X, I'm sorry, I put the wrong thing. Let me fix that. All right, you can see that I made that mistake. Now we gotta be careful. So X, since X is inert, and since inert goes before that word or that phrase for every, we need to put that first. And then the other one, the active, since that goes after the word for every, that's gonna go over here. And then we say equal to 95 because it's 95 for every one. All right, just like we said just before I asked you to try it. Uh, we got to say equal to 95. And so that's why I've got this right here. Okay, I wrote it the opposite way, but it's okay. When you, when you write an equation, you guys, with an equal sign, I'm not talking about inequalities with alligators, okay? I'm, not, I'm talking about equal signs. It doesn't matter what side you put the two things on. It's, this equation is exactly the same as this. As long as the two sides are the same, it doesn't matter which side each of them are on. It's the same equation. So this is fine. What's the other equation going to be? Well, since it has to add up to 336, like I said earlier, isn't it going to be this right here? Okay, the two ingredients have to add up to 336 because the whole thing together weighs 336. Remember, centigrams, anytime you talk about something with grams, that's weight. Okay, so... Um, when if something weighs 336 the amount of weight has to add up to 336 so that means that the number of centigrams have to add up to 336 so i've got my two equations i plug in the one i plug in this one since the x is already by itself might as well just uh, plug that into the other one because i've already got the variable by itself you can see i did that here multiplying by one to get rid of the bracket it's still the same thing combine like terms Divide out, I get y equal to 3.5. And as I said before, when you get the fraction answer 336 divided by 96 right here, getting y by itself, if you want to put that in lowest terms, you can uh, and use that as your answer. But if the question, as I've said before, if the question, I'm going to go and write this in because it's better this way. Uh, if it says to write answer as what? Write answer as a decimal okay and there's actually two answers but if you if it says that on say your test question or something like that remember to do what it means to take your fraction answer you guys put that in your calculator make sure to say top divided by bottom in that order and then it'll give you 3.5 okay so it is better to say it as a decimal here but if you get a fraction answer, as I've said before, you can leave it in fraction form as long as you put it in lowest terms, unless I tell you to write it as a decimal, then I would want you to make it into a decimal. So that's why I put that here. Okay, it's because I wanted you to make it into a decimal. All right. Um, and so um, finishing up the problem here, and I'll plug that back into this equation over here to figure out what X is. And... Um, I get 332.5. Make sure to tell me which one's which here, and then also tell me how it's measured. Okay, it's a unit of measurement. All right, it's unit of measurement here is not active and inert. Okay, uh, that tells you which one is which, but it's measured in centigrams, isn't it? Okay, that tells you, uh, you can't just say 3.5 active. All right, that doesn't tell me how much 3.5 is. It's, it's not 3.5 grams, for example, it is 3.5 centigrams. And so you need to say centigrams because it's measured that way. And then active and inert here tells me which one is which. 3.5 is the active because 3.5 was the Y and active is the Y. Okay, and same thing here with the inert for being X. Okay, uh, and so that gives me this answer right here. So that concludes, uh, since we're skipping 8 and 9, that concludes... Uh, section 3.4 all right um we're going to get into more word problems moving forward that have kind of a common theme to each worksheet um the book doesn't do it that way uh the book uh will take for example the the, the next worksheet uh we're doing uh motion problems you know objects in motion like cars and airplanes and stuff 
the textbook looks at motion problems a little bit in chapter two and a little bit in chapter four, and they kind of have that kind of approach to it. I don't like doing it that way. I like to look at them all at once. Uh, and so um, that's why the next worksheet is going to focus not on a particular section, but on the theme of motion problems altogether. Uh, so when you see the next worksheet, you'll see that there's a, a note at the top of four different sections all in once. It's because uh, the motion problems come from those four different sections, but the focus on the next worksheet will just be motion problems. All right. So again, follow the worksheet. All right. Don't worry about the fact that we're kind of going back and forth with the sections in the textbook. Follow the worksheet. All right. Remember that that's the worksheet problems that you study for the exam anyway. Uh, so, but uh, as far as doing the homework, yeah, you do need to kind of jump around a little bit, as you've seen when I give the homework problems lately. Uh, the sections have jumped around, but again, it's it's all about the worksheets and knowing how to do those problems mainly. Uh, that's what gets you ready for the exams. Okay, so um, try not to focus too much on the jumping around of the sections. All right, uh, it's all about going in order here with the worksheets and make sure you know how to do all those problems on the worksheets. All right, so um, we'll look at those motion problems coming up in the next worksheet. In the meantime, though, as usual, let me know if you have any questions, okay? Take care, and uh, we'll see you back for motion problems in the next video.